2022 spring meetings of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank continue until Sunday, April 24th. What is interesting is that the International Monetary Fund to meet the development of the and G20 meetings are all held in hybrid format. What that hybrid? Yes. It is a combination of both real physical presence for all delegates and virtual for others. The times. We no longer have to travel thousands of miles to attend a meeting. You can basically be there from the comfort of your home, not even your office. A revolutionary development that was not really apparent BC times. BC times, that is, before Corona, and now has become flagrant. The economic repercussions of which needs to be studied carefully to assess how will this affect global travel, how will it affect office space, utilization, development, mobilization cost, and all the other unclear effects so as to be able to mitigate the negatives and build on the positives. Good evening. You're watching the Business Insider here on Nile TV International, and I'm Ayman Salah. Our weekly program tackles events affecting economies and business, and we aim to bring you the inside story. Welcome back. Let's start with our first news item for the week. The IMF upgraded its second growth forecast for the Egyptian economy this year. It expects it to expand at a 5.9% clip in fiscal year 2021-2022. That's up 0.3 percentage points from its previous forecast in January, despite soaring food and energy prices threatening to weigh on economic activity. The government had recently looked lowered its growth outlook to 5.7% from 6.2% to 6.5% due to the economic impact of the war on, on the global front, the MFR is downwards its growth projections for 2022 and 2023 to 3.6% latest world economic outlook. That's 0.8 percentage points lower for this year than in its last forecast in for its part, the World Bank will cut its global growth outlook to 3.2% from 2022, that's down from 4.1%. The revision marks a significant slowdown in global growth as the war continues to cause worldwide spillovers through commodity markets, trade and financial channels. The government is revisiting its borrowing strategy with a committee headed by the Minister of Planning, Hela El Saeed. The mandate is to study the foreign borrowing file and restrict it to very narrow limits. Members of Parliament have voiced concern over the rise in the external debt during a House plenary session. According to published reports, the external debt balance rose nearly 6.6% quarter on quarter to approximately $145.5 billion at the end of the second quarter of the current fiscal year. We'll be back. Affecting. Welcome back to the Business Insider tonight. I have the pleasure to be joined by Mr. Mohammed Abdurrahman. He is the vice chairman of one of the most energetic business associations in the country, uh, an, an association that had its, um, its print on the economy of this country, and it goes back to uh, the early 2000s. Uh, the Egyptian Junior Business Association is made up of um, business people that are under the age of 45. However, their uh, uh, capabilities are capabilities to be reckoned with within the uh, market, within the economy, and uh, within the know-how of the people running it. 
Uh, tonight, I'm joined by Mr. Muhammad Abdurrahman. He is the Vice Chairman of the EJB, the Egyptian Junior Business Association. A pleasure having you here on the show. Thank you for uh, your introduction and thank you for having me uh, with you, a talented uh, presenter. Thank you very thank much. You. Very kind of you. Um, all right, so trade is our topic tonight. Um, we have economic challenges. Let's watch this report and then start our discussion. We'll be back. Egypt undertook exchange rate monetary and fiscal measures in response to adverse global developments that include soaring prices and tightening financial conditions aggravated by the war in Ukraine. Yet these policy actions also reflect challenges with the surge in growth in the first half of the fiscal year 2021-2022 to 9%, which was supported by rebounds in export-oriented sectors is expected to slow down gradually through the following fiscal year. According to the World Bank reforms to enhance private investments, promote exports and foreign direct investments remain crucial for the economy's resilience and competitiveness. On March 21st, the Central Bank of Egypt allowed the exchange rate to depreciate overnight by around 16 percent to stem the widening net exports deficit. It also raised policy rates by 100 basis points to curb inflation and contain portfolio outflows. The government, for its part, introduced a mitigation package worth 130 billion Egyptian pounds, which amounts to 1.6% of the 2022 to 2023 fiscal year's GDP to alleviate the impact of the rising prices by increasing public sector wages and pensions, alleviating tax measures, and expanding coverage of the cash transfer program, among other measures. Yet, the base effects and the demand overshoot are expected to start tapering off, and economic activity will be adversely affected by the repercussions of the war in Ukraine over the next year, as the war drives up import spending, hurts tourism revenues, and drives portfolio outflows. Therefore, it is perceived that the continuous pursuit of structural reforms to unleash the private sector's potential in higher value added and export oriented activities are necessary to create jobs and improve living standards. Welcome back. Allow me once again to welcome our guest, the Vice Chairman of the Egyptian Junior Business Association, known as the EJB, Mr. Mohammed Abdurrahman. Once again, a pleasure having you on the show here tonight. And let's start by a statement that is always said. Um, it is said that industry is the engine of growth. It is, it is said that real estate development is the engine of growth. Yet the notion of trade being one of the locomotives of growth is not really um, adopted. What would be your comment on that? This is a very important topic that we used to work on last days uh, through the AGB, is to raise the awareness about the importance of trade to the economy. Because there is nothing can work without trade. Trade is the migration of the products to cash. Is the transformation of the, all the value that uh, uh, can be put in the production, in the agriculture, even in the services. Without these products reaching the proper channels, and uh, maintaining a sustainable ability to choose for the consumers, it will never enrich any industry from all industri industries that you mentioned. Mm. The production is very important to have a local production in the country. But without proper trading, you cannot ask people to go and to buy a local product just for loyalty. Because if we can talk specifically on the consumer products, I mean the products related to the food industry as example. So it's a very low 
point price products that cannot built by loyalty. It's about availability, visibility, availability in the markets. And even, and this is not only for the local market, it's even for the foreign markets. How so? Because we used to encourage exportation, mm. but we have to recognize that the dynamics got changed a lot in the last decades. It's not about traditional markets. It's different channels. It's online channels. It's organized chains, organized channels. Lot of retail networks, big numbers of retail networks all over the, the world. Specifically, if we consider the African continent. Mm. The problem, the main problem is how the producers reach the customers. It's about the route to market. To make it simple, route to market is the way for the products from the planet of production to the shelf so the consumer can reach it easily and can buy it. So you can imagine the cycle of the production and the raw material, materials from the African continent that can fly all over the world overseas. Then it come back with organized trade channels. It's not only about production. Production is a big part, it's a start. But without a proper trade, they, will not, they cannot acquire market share. So even the exportation should be changed to a word, another terminology, that we can call it access to markets. It's not about sending a container full of products overseas. This will not make a sustainable business. And now it's all about sustainability. So even to go overseas with our local products, exportation, it needs a proper route to market. Hmm. If we can see what's happening in an easy, very easy, simple way in our market here, you can see a very organized availability for products from international brands all over the market. They have no factories here, but they have a proper sustainable market share and they dominate the markets. And even we can uh, bring and, uh, and build these factories with the same machinery and it can produce the same quality. The problem will, will be again is reaching the market. So it's all about trading. So when we used to have precious conversation with the decision makers and people that work on production, I always want to raise hands. Please take care when you plan for to invest in production, in manufacturing. How you will make conversion for your products to cash again. You want market share, you want money, you want profits, you want to compete. So the machines will never miss. So it's about trading. And if we... Distribution and trading. Uh, specifically, <coughs> distribution, distribution is a very big sector because distribution can absorb a lot of job opportunities because it needs a lot of people. Mm. And not a people, the targeted people because they are the yes. Mm. So you're creating job opportunities Definitely for you. Definitely, yes. And you invest in digitalization. That's very, very important because everything now is going digital. So you need e-access to control this mega logistics, the market, warehousing. So sometimes you can imagine that the investment that is needed in this sector can be much more uh, bigger than what we use in the, in the production. Again, the production is very important. It is a start. But I want always to say it is very important to, to attach the production to the distribution and to the organized trading. It's simply the movement of the products from the factories to the different channels. Channels is growing. Or from the field, not only from the factories, agricultural yeah. products, Exa for example. Exactly, yes. It brings to mind 
One of the um, uh, issues, and specifically when you're talking about supply chain, is the high cost. And this is why when it comes to the agricultural sector, for example, some have uh, voiced concern and have called to create cooperatives whereby you collect the produce and through the cooperatives you start to distribute them. Where is the trading component is this, in this? It is uh, creating and, and investing in an ecosystem that develop organized distribution houses. Hmm. And we face many problems in the price point for strategic products like the potatoes as examples that happened before. Hmm. It was all about the distribution. Hmm. We used many programs, talked about why, why you sell, why it reached uh, X amount, 15 uh, EGP in the market. It's only 1.5 from the land. So the question here is because why? the efficiency of the distribution. So when, when one talks about um, trading as a contributor to the rising cost, you would uh, uh, attribute it to the inefficient distribution system? Exactly, yes, because distribution system is not only about the, the, the one who is making the distribution. He needs warehouses. He needs warehouses to be available with reasonable cost, with proper uh, license. He needs efficient operation in fleet management. So he needs many warehouses to reach and to make proper distribution because if you can see the population in Egypt, Egypt has a very big population by the way, that can absorb many things. Yes, we need to make exportation definitely, yes. At the same time, we have a very big lost opportunity in the market regarding our population. We have a very big population that con consume very well in a sustainable matter in a sustainable manner. You, you can see many producers, Egyptian producers, they go exhibitions and they put their products and they're not available here in the, in the Egyptian market because of the challenges of distribution. They cannot afford the cost of distribution hmm. because it's very, it's very costly. So yes, the answer is yes. It has a very direct impact on the availability of the product in the market especially when it comes to local products that we want to promote, that we want the birth of uh, 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 Egyptian products to come to market, to come to light, and to compete successfully with the international brands. Mm. So if, you, if we want to do this properly, we want to promote, we want to make incentives, we want to put attention about this function in terms of professional makers, and we have in Egypt, Professional distribution houses, definitely, yes. And this is the only way that can enrich the Egyptian products to, uh, be, av to, to, to be available in the uh, retail channels. The retail channels is uh, growing in a very uh, speedy uh, manner. You have now every, everywhere, you have shops, you have convenience store, you have uh, uh, big chains, you have small uh, groceries, a lot of... So when there is an accusation that the supply chain and, and the, the trading component increases the cost, your attribution is that it increases the cost because of the inefficient, inefficiency? Yes. It is the inefficiency of the distribution domestic logistic process and the scarcity of the distribution players in the market. Okay. And the way. So how do you address these two issues? When we looked at this topic in general, we found many pillars that can affect this. Mm. One of them is the human resources. The trend people, availability of trend people. And the people who like and love to work in this market, in this industry, trade marketing and sales and distribution. One more thing is the banking sector, paying attention to this function. Because as example, the banking sector put many initiatives 
and ignored the trade sector. I don't want to, to say it ignorance, but may it need some prioritization. And uh, I can refer to some uh, developed European countries like Germany as example. You will find the impact of trade on the GDP is very high. A very big percentage of the pie is from What's the, the trade. What's the impact on GDP here? It's still important and it's, it's known as important. So when However, we it can grow yes, much more. De definitely, yes. Definitely. The, the more things that can move the economy and move the products and move the cash and enrich the, the, the production and the agriculture is uh, availability and uh, conversion for these products to cash. Availability for these products in the channels. As example, when I, I talked about the banking sector, so when a banking sector come and put an initiative, in incentives for production, so this part of incentives will go as example for financing the fleet. So a manufacturing factory can bring a fleet with a good interest rate because of the incentive. However, the one who needs the fleets, the fleet, the vans, is a distribution house. And because only of the registration card, this is a trade registration card, and this is a manufacturing registration card. So it goes, so with a trade registration card... You don't benefit from yes, the low interest yes. rates. And actually, so this is a simple example of, so mm. a, a, a producer can get a interest on building a fleet like 5% in, in initiative and double interest rate for a distribution house. And the problem here is the differentiation between kind of traders. Because sometimes, yes, a trader can be only an entity with two persons. Can only one, a wholesaler then that, uh, who, who can uh, store for increasing prices or something like this. It's not, not good for the pricing of the products and some distributors that is normal and some big distribution houses that many cars many people erp systems many warehouses so this need to be differentiated hmm. because i think not i'm think I'm, I'm quite sure it will have a direct impact on the development on the local production and of every association that work in the system trading and manufacturing and agriculture so it's attached to the agriculture as example it's attached to the manufacturing for services food and beverages yes. retail so basically all all the De different uh, sectors yes. forming the economy however it is accused of preferring to work in importation rather than exportation. What's your answer? For traders? For traders? Yes. Yes. Because, see, it has many, many aspects for this. <clears throat> some, it, simply, some people can think that it's about the quality of product, as example, that we need uh, to have only a proper product from overseas. But actually, it's not. It's about the strategy. With imported products, you can have uh, behind this product some organized, very organized uh, production uh, uh, factory or, or big company. So it can maintain a sustainable business for the distributor. When it comes to local, there is some now big factories, local factories that start to apply, to apply a proper route to market, proper distribution and it's working very well and when it comes to big names that big local names that we can see everywhere in the market successful uh, competition everything you will find a good distribution setup mm. and most of the producers that know well about the distribution you will find them having another company owned by them for distribution mm. not the factory so my advice it can never we can never mix both functions together. Mm. So for the uh, having some, some interest in importation, 
Sometimes it's for scarcity and of scaling of production because maybe we still need some time to, to maintain a good scale of production because international brands used to make exportation from their parents to many countries so they have a good scale so they can offer good prices versus quality. So for the traders or for the organized traders, they can make a decent margin. Traders in FMCGs, FMCGs means the consumer goods, they can never, proper distribution, they can never make big profits. Sometimes uh, there are some uh, points about this high prices is because of traders, no. For, for, for organized distribution, it cannot happen because margins is very tight. It's very tight for, for both of the producer and the distributor. So it's not about this, it, it is about... All right. Let me... Um, I know that the EJB, the Egyptian Junior Business Association, has an annual product, which is the National Business Agenda, known as the MBA. Yes. Whereby each sector identifies the issues that it faces, uh, it provides recommendations, and it states who is the relevant body that the EJB will be uh, working with in order to address the issues and to follow up on implementing the recommendations. When you talk about the trading sector, you identified the issues, the challenges. Putting them in points, what would be number one, two, three, four? Then, what are the recommendations and who are the entities that you're seeking to lobby with or work with in order to address these issues? First, we, we are creating a body. Uh, Let's talk about the challenges first. Yes. What would you say is challenge number one, challenge number two, challenge number three? Challenge number one is the definition of the organized trade. Perfect. So, and this is about GAFI. Mm. Um, General Authority for Investment. For Investment. To make a different uh, identity for the distribution houses. It's because having the same registration card with trade it's not representing because... So here you're talking about a legislative change. Yes. You need legislative change. Yes. So first of all is redefining the uh, uh, identity or the legal status, better put, the legal status yes. of the trading entities, yes. number one. So number two. Number two is the uh, banking sector. Hmm. The banking sector is to recognize the importance and the different identity and different structure that the distribution houses is formed from. It is part, we can call it, it is a part of the manufacturing. It's like writing a book and publishing it. Mm. We know, everyone know that books is someone write the book and someone publish the book. So I mean entities. Mm. So it's same thing. So two is access to finance. Yes. When you're talking about it, the banking sector, you're talking about access to finance. And benefits. And incentives. Benef uh, yes. And incentives. Benefits. benefits. Incentives is about the Ministry of Finance. Hmm. The All Ministry right. of Finance. So, so, um, so it's, it's uh, two parts. The banking sector is about benefits. And, or not limiting. Benefits here, you're talking about the... Um, the interest rates, the low interest rates that are being provided exactly. through the central bank initiative. Exactly, yes. You want the trading sector, the uh, uh, logistics in, in the trading sector to benefit from the low interest rates. Yes. That's what you mean by benefits. Yes. Okay. That's the banking. Yes. Number three. Finance. Access Ministry to finance. Of finance. Ministry, Ministry of, of finance. finance. The incentives. What do you want from the Ministry of Finance? As example, we have uh, training programs for the people in this sector. And actually, we got an uh, impression of interest from the Minister of Finance about uh, making sort of incentives for training people for the sector. 
um, you know, we have incentives for exportation. Example, we have incentives for production. There is no any kind of incentives. Because incentives can be used in some tax benefits. So it's, it's all about the Minister of Finance. And we are preparing a paper with some recommendations. So we can put to the Minister of Finance to, to evaluate it and to see how, how he can help in this. Here you're talking about going to the legislative body as well, because the Ministry of Finance cannot do anything without a legal uh, uh, yes. setup. Yes, definitely. That means the legislative branch. Yes. And here you're talking about Parliament. So how are you addressing this issue, not only with the Ministry of Finance, but also with Parliament? It's about the policy paper. So when we get the policy paper ready, because you know, we, we need to, put, to address the points, and the pillars and our recommendations. Hmm. Then we will see what we can do, what can be aligned and what we cannot. So you talked about the General Authority for Investment, GAFI, and here you're talking under the uh, uh, authority of the Prime Minister. Then you talked about the banking sector and here you're talking under the authority of the Central Bank. And now you're talking about the executive body, which is the Ministry of Finance, uh, in order to approach the legislative body, which is Parliament. Uh, what would you recommend to them? What are your recommendations in the policy paper? Maybe it's not now the right time to talk about the policy paper because it's not uh, yet highlight finished, but um, there is more points. It's, it's not only this. There is another point, one related to the to facilitating the movement of the vans in the in the roads. Here you're talking Ministry of Interior. Uh, yes, it, and and um, there is another thing is finding warehouses, mm. proper warehouses, that we that distribution houses can easily find proper papers that is legal process to to facilitate having the products near by the retail networks. Mm. Because one of the inefficiency of this industry is moving long distances with the vans. Mm. There is many, many, many points. One thing is the organizing the relationship of the workers in this sector with the companies. Because, you know, it's very, it has another dimension of risk because people, young people, work in this industry, they have the responsibility for the cash, for the products, and the products go to the market, then it come back with cash, and there is some kind of responsibility between the company and people, and this is not a, diff a, a normal kind of job. It's not, it is... But now we're talking financial inclusion, and, and basically you're talking about a cashless society, so it all goes digital. I think by time you will not be dealing in cash. Yes, this is a valid point. However, there is still a lot of, of dynamics in the market that cannot be controlled this way, and it will take time. Mm -hmm. This is helping a lot. The aggregators now is helping a lot in this mm. for the cash collection and everything. But you can easily, when you can imagine, you can see all this kind, this mega value of product that's it's move and this conversion to cash all, all the people who handle this is the young people that work in this industry. So it needs some, some insights how to protect this, how to, to protect this kind of relationship. How will such a reform, with your recommendations, contribute to economic growth and GDP growth? This is a, a good and very uh, uh, deep uh, question. This definitely ha will have a very big impact on revenue, especially for the local producers and for the job, increasing job opportunities. Mm. And uh, it, will, it will make a sustainable economy. And it needs a proper ecosystem. And support enrich. for the private sector within this sector. Definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. And, and this sector, because a word of distribution, the title of distribution, it includes many aspects. Trade marketing is a very big, mm. it's a very big thing that, that has a, a lot of details. Logistic, 
domestic logistics. Hmm. It's a very important service, even in online aggregators now, that is working ev everywhere. Still, you want to have a near place of the products to reach the customer or the end user and a vehicle to make the transportation efficiently. And now with the new railroads that are being constructed, it will not only be vans but also railroads which will reduce the cost of transportation and help promote this trading sector. Am I correct? It's not uh, prepared for, uh, for transportation of commodities. No, it, it, it is being prepared for goods, transportation of goods. I don't have uh, enough information about right. how it will work to make to the, this But definitely railroad of transportation of cargo and, and goods is much more cost effective than the yes, transportation. That, that of definitely, yes, definitely. Right. Uh, in, in, in for intern, internal right. transportation. And hopefully yes. continental mm -hmm. in due time. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed Abdurrahman, the vice chairman of the Egyptian Junior Business Association known as the EJB, thank you very much for joining us. Most you welcome. The best of luck. Thank you thank for you. having me. Pleasure. Thank you for joining us. See you again same time next week. I'm Ayman Salah. Good night.